Zach Stone here, and you're about to watch part two of our Om Guru's continuing education seminar on power flow and power transfer between two buses. In this video, we're gonna derive both the real and reactive power transfer formula using the complex power transformer that we derived in part one of this seminar. If you haven't watched part one yet, you might wanna pause this video first and start there. If you're studying for the P exam, then this video is gonna be really helpful for you since power flow is a subject on the exam. If you'd like to learn more about our upcoming continuing education seminars for professional engineers, check us out at www.omgurus.com. We calculated the complex power. Now what we're gonna do, we're just gonna split that into the real component and the imaginary component. The real component of complex power is what? The real component of complex power is real power P in watts. The imaginary component of complex power is reactive power Q in VARs. So on this page, we're gonna get the real power transfer formula. Next page, we're gonna get the complex power transfer formula. And then we can look at how all of these different relationships uh, have an effect on sending real and reactive power. Ready? So step one, this is the complex power formula we got to you on the previous page. We're starting right where we left off. We already said real power, real power is the real component of complex power, right? P is the real component of S. So let's get the real component of this. How do we calculate the real component of a complex number? We multiply the magnitude of that complex number by what? We multiply the magnitude of the complex number by the cosine of its own angle. Here's what I mean. We have two terms here, right? Here's the magnitude VRVS over X. Here's the magnitude VRVS over X. Now we're gonna multiply the magnitude by the cosine of its own angle. The cosine of its own angle, 90 minus delta. We don't touch this minus sign. We're gonna do the same thing to the term on the right. Here's the magnitude. These where the receiving voltage divided by the reactance. And now we multiply it by the cosine of its own angle, the cosine of 90 degrees. A couple of quick trig identities that are gonna let us simplify this. If I have the cosine of any variable plus 90 degrees, that's the same thing as the negative sine of just that variable. So here's the cosine of a variable plus 90 degrees. That's the same thing as the negative sine of that same variable. The variable in this case is negative. It's negative delta. The second trig identity is what? What's the cosine of 90 degrees? What's the cosine of 90 degrees? Cosine of 90 degrees uh, is zero. You don't even need to memorize that. Look, What's the cosine of 90? Cosine 90, zero. So cosine 90 cancels to zero. Zero times anything is still what? Still zero. This whole second term goes away and we're left with just the negative of VRVS over X times the sine of negative delta. All right, last trick identity and we're done with the real power formula. The sine of a negative variable is the same thing as the negative sine of that same variable without the negative sign. We're just pulling the negative sign out of the parentheses. So this negative sign right here, the conjugate of our torque angle delta, we're pulling it out. Guess what? I already have a negative sign here. So negative times negative is positive. The real power transfer to the receiving bus from the sending bus is equal to the magnitude of VRVS over the reactants times the sine of the difference in angle between the two buses. If you've recently taken the P exam or if you're taking the P exam in the future, this is what the reference handbook calls P sub E or power transfer for both transmission lines or synchronous machines. All right, one more page of working through these formulas, and I promise this is over. I know not everyone likes this. We're going to get some great hands-on examples after this. 
So we calculated the receiving power. And really quick, before I do that, what do you notice about this diagram on the receiving power? Do you see how the receiving power is equal to the sending real power? Anyone want to take a guess at why that is? Look, the sending power is the same quantity leaving the sending bus going all the way to the receiving bus. Yeah, Alexander got it first. R is negligible. There's no what being absorbed in this line. There's no real power being absorbed in that line. So 100% of the sending power, sending real power, makes it through to the other side. These two things are, these two quantities are equal because there's no resistance. Resistance equals uh, zero ohms. Now, is that going to be true when we look at the reactive power? And again, this is where I found so many other sources they get hung up on, they make mistakes, or they're using terminology that sounds the same for all the quantities when there's very specific nuances to, to the terms. In the previous example, we can just call it, we can call it sending power, receiving power, or power transfer. Doesn't matter what we call it because it's all identical. All of the real power goes from the sending bus to the receiving bus. Can we apply the same terminology to the reactive power? No, why not? Alex said, no, the line impedance is reactive. Exactly. Notice that now, look, the receiving reactive power right here does not equal the sending power. Why is that? Well, this is an inductor. What kind of power is an inductor going to absorb? It's going to absorb reactive power. So you've got, I'm going to call it Q sub X, X just for reactants. You've got some reactive power being absorbed by this X reactants. That's why these two are not equal to each other. Got to be careful in your terminology. This is the receiving reactive power. This is the reactive power transferred to the receiving bus. This is not the sending reactive power. This is not the power sent by the sending bus. All right, so here's the same complex uh, power formula, the complex receiving power that we solved for previously. Now we're going to apply the imaginary component to separate this into the imaginary component, which is the reactive power. Previous page, we multiplied the magnitude by the cosine of the angle to get the real component. What do we do differently now to get the imaginary component? We're solving for Q this time, not P. We're solving for reactive power. So instead of multiplying the magnitude by the cosine of its own angle, now we're going to multiply the magnitude by what? Sine theta. Great job, Pranav. Yeah, we're going to multiply the magnitude by the sine of its own angle. That's how we can pull out the imaginary component of our complex receiving power to get just the receiving reactive power. All right, let's do it. Here's the magnitude VR over V or VR VS over X, no change. We're multiplying by the sine of its own angle, sine 90 minus delta. We don't touch that negative sign. Next, here's the magnitude of the second term, VR squared over X. And again, we're multiplying by the sine of its own angle, sine 90. Two quick trig identities that's going to help us simplify this. The sine of 90 degrees plus a variable is the same thing as the cosine of that variable. The sine of a variable plus 90 degrees is the same thing as the cosine of that variable. Again, here our variable is negative, it's negative delta. Last, what's the sine of 90? If you're not sure, you can use your calculator. Sine of 90 is just one. So sine of 90, this term cancels to one. One time anything times anything is still just that magnitude. All right, <clears throat> we're on step four. We've got one more trig identity. The cosine of any negative number is the same as the cosine of that number positive. In other words, cosine of negative delta, that's the same thing as just cosine delta. We can just ignore that negative sign. It's the same thing. All right, last step, and we're done with all these formulas. All we're going to do is we're going to pull out and factor out the receiving voltage magnitude on both sides. So I got VR here, and look, I'm going to replace this square with another VR. 
So we're going to pull out a VR on each side. VR over X times parentheses. I still have VS cosine delta. No change to the minus sign. And I still have this VR here. All right, we're done. The hard part is over. That's it for part two. Coming up on part three, we're gonna use both the real and the reactive power formulas that we just derived to explore both the torque angle and the real component of the sending voltage to identify just what determines the direction of and the amount of both real power flow and reactive power flow between two buses. Coming up next.